Okay, let's move on. So we're going to talk about support brigades now. Every division has five support slots that you can add on. These can consist of different pieces of artillery, anti-tank, as well as a bunch of other utilities. So one thing to take in mind is when you do add on a support brigade, you do suffer some penalties as well as benefits, as displayed here. One of the penalties you suffer from is less organization. And in some cases as well, you also do suffer from less HP. If your division consists mainly of infantry battalions, motorized or mechanized, you can feel free to take the loss in either HP or organization. Because to begin with, you'll have very high organization and very high HP to begin with. Now, the problem for tank-based divisions is taking those losses in piercing, HP and organization can make a large difference to the overall division strength. An example that works for you, for instance, if we add reconnaissance, engineers, logistics, field hospitals, and signal companies, you can see overall the stats that we're losing is piercing, and we're losing a little bit of organization. Yet again, it is an infantry battalion, so you already have a lot of organization anyway, so you can feel free to take those losses. An example that works against you, if we're going to add reconnaissance, engineers, logistics, field hospitals, and maintenance onto a tank division, that will result in the armor dropping as well as the piercing by some quite large amounts. Overall, for a tank division, these are one of the two main stats. In this case, this is probably not the best idea. Okay, let's go over the support companies. Engineers add extra breakthrough, add entrenchment, add extra defense. They also add extra movement and defense in specific terrains, as well over the, when you upgrade it higher, you do also result in extra attack as well. Also, when you do upgrade it, you do get extra entrenchment. Overall, engineer is the best support battalion. Uh, there is no reason that every single division shouldn't have this on. And get this as well, it is very cheap because it only requires support equipment. Next up is Reconnaissance. Overall, it gives a movement boost for lots of specific terrains by 10%. The main stat is Reconnaissance, which increases the tactics used in battle. Now this tends to be more effective for divisions that are making breakthroughs. You want overall the best tactics to make the breakthroughs that you can. So this seems to work most effectively on tank divisions. Next is military police. This offers a suppression bonus. In most cases, you're probably just better off training more divisions if you want to get more suppression. Overall, I really don't think this is worth the money or the research. The next is maintenance, which increases reliability. Reliability is a stat that reduces attrition. So in this case, it means your equipment will last longer and you will take less losses. Maintenance companies give more of a benefit for divisions that have high production costs. Retaining the high production units such as tanks and mechanized is more important than retaining less expensive equipment. The next is field hospitals. These next three technologies, as well as logistics as well as signal companies, also required motorized as well. So the costs for these are a little bit higher. The result of field hospitals is less experience loss for the division, and also you get your casualties back to the manpower pool. Logistics reduces the supply usage. Yet again, in most cases, if you're over your supply usage, you need to be building infrastructure or pulling divisions out of the front line. In most cases, I've never found myself using this. And finally, we have signal companies. Signal companies are probably the most underrated support battalion. It has extra initiative, which works like reinforce rate. It does two things. As I mentioned, it increases reinforce rate. Also, it gives extra planning bonus, so you can increase the planning bonus speed. The four different kinds of support artillery brigades are artillery, anti-air, anti-tank, and rocket artillery. Artillery adds extra soft attack and as you upgrade it, it gains more and more soft attack. With that as well, it also has quite high defense, which will upgrade 
as you get higher tiers of artillery. Anti-tank has high piercing and also high hard attack. As you upgrade it, it gains more hard attack and more piercing. Antier is primarily focused around air attack and piercing. As you upgrade it, it gains more piercing and more anti-air as well. Plus, all of the other stats do slowly increase by small increments as well. Finally, is Rocket Artillery. Rocket Artillery does the most soft attack and it also gives extra breakthrough as you upgrade it. Before we move on from support brigades and artillery, just know the first four support brigades require only support equipment and the last three require support equipment and motorized, so are a little bit more expensive on the production. Artillery wise, be aware that artillery requires a larger amount of metal to tungsten. Anti-air just requires steel. Rocket artillery requires a larger amount of tungsten and a slightly less amount of steel. But the most expensive anti-tank requires a larger amount of tungsten and steel. This is a nice to know because in the late game tungsten becomes a rarer and rarer resource. Okay, let's go over the different tank types. The reason why you'll add tank battalions onto a division is to add extra armor and extra breakthrough. Light tanks offer the cheapest overall cost in production value and resources, which also give the highest amount of overall speed with a maximum with the level 3 light up to 14 kilometers per hour. The medium tank on the other hand has higher breakthrough, has higher armor and requires tungsten. And finally, the heavy tank requires a large amount of resources, a very, very high production cost, chromium, but overall the highest amount of armor. The final two tank types are the modern tank, which is of a jack of all trades. It has the speed of a light. It has the armor and chromium cost of a heavy, but overall it has a slightly cheaper production cost, which of a medium. Finally, you have the super heavy tank, which has an insane amount of armor, hardness, breakthrough, but slow speed and a astronomical production cost. Okay, let's talk about tank variations. You've got the anti-tank, you've got the self-propelled artillery, and you have the anti-air tank. All three variations lose most of their breakthrough. The tank destroyer gains more hard attack and more piercing. The self-propelled artillery gains more soft attack and the anti-air gun gains more anti-air. Also note, the anti-air, self-propelled anti-air gun also loses a chunk of its armor and the self-propelled artillery loses a massive chunk of the armor. Each tank variant has the same production cost per vehicle, but tank variants have smaller battalions. For example, a light tank battalion requires 60 tanks, but a light tank destroyer battalion requires 30. This means the cost to create tank variants is less and it costs less to reinforce those tank variant battalions. This means the cost to create tank variants is less and it costs less to reinforce tank variant battalions. Let's compare the difference between motorized and mechanized. First of all, motorized, when you first get it researched, has a huge speed of 12 kilometers per hour. And every mechanized you get after that gets slightly higher speed that eventually meets up with the speed of motorized. Also, the production cost of motorized is very, very small in comparison to mechanized, which you just start quite high. Be aware that motorized as well has penalties traveling over certain terrains. Some nasty big penalties, particularly for speed as well as attack, where Mechanize suffers none of those. As a final note, Mechanize adds armor, extra hardness, and also extra piercing and breakthrough, where Motorize does not. Last, but definitely not least, we're going to talk about the different infantry battalion types. The question is, why don't you just go for an army that's based solely around commandos? Well, the reasons why is infantry takes less time to train, uses less resources, and has more HP. Now, what does HP do? HP is the total amount of hit points per division. And what it means is when that division takes losses and has higher HP, it will get less losses. So if a marine or mounted division suffers losses, because they have less HP, they will need more equipment to reinforce that division to bring it back to full strength. 
Okay, so what are the benefits of using commandos? First of all, all three of them have more organization and more recovery rate. Marines have more attack over marsh, rivers, and amphibious. Mountaineers have extra attack, movement, and defense for hills and mountains. And paratroopers have the ability to be parachuted. And that's it guys, that's the in-depth guide for multiplayer template divisions, as well as a brief overview of the stats and whatnot. Anything in this video that you may have missed or not covered enough, please let me know in the comments below. Also guys, this video had a lot of work put into it and a lot of research needed, so feel free to share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit if possible to get out the message. Apart from that though guys, hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye bye.